Senator Carrie Dietzik joins me to talk about proposed legislation to retrofit older buildings with sprinkler systems. Thanks for being here. Thank you for inviting me. Is this tragedy a wake-up call? I think it is a wake-up call. It was very unfortunate. It was right before Thanksgiving, a uh, very cold morning, and unfortunately five people died from a fire on the 14th floor. And I think that alerted to people who were not aware that there are several high-rise buildings in the state of Minnesota that don't have sprinkler systems. And this building actually had some sprinkler systems on lower levels, but when you get to the higher levels, the fire department can't even reach with ladders or anything. So really, at a higher point in the building, you don't have a lot of options. Right. I think the fire department has told me about above 75 feet is where they, which is about six, seven stories, is where they really need the sprinkler systems up above to have an impact. And in this building, it was mostly the ground floor where the maintenance equipment was and the first floor where there's some common area. They had that sprinklered, but not upstairs. It was just a uh, lack of resources. As I understand it, since 1979, automatic sprinkler systems are required in high-rise buildings. Cedar High is an example of an older public housing building, and no retrofitting has been required up to this point. How many buildings in Minnesota will be impacted if this becomes law? Well, in Minneapolis, there are 26 public housing buildings that will need to be retrofitted, and there are several other low-income, high-rise apartment buildings that under this bill would need to be retrofitted. And then across the state, we could have as many as 40 more. Um, the bill is focusing on residential properties, and it does have some carve-outs for certain, um, like, hospitals where they're doing surgery. We don't want a, the sprinkler above that. So there are certain areas that are carved out, but in the focus is on high-rise residential units. And does that include public housing and uh, units that are properties that are owned by private individuals? Yep. Mm -hmm. So I would guess that this would be a very expensive bill. How would it be paid for? Could some of it be part of a bonding bill? Where's the funding mechanism? So for public housing, again in Minneapolis, since I represent Minneapolis, I know that best, they have about $152 million in deferred maintenance. So that's critical maintenance on their 26 buildings. So they have 42 total public housing buildings and 26 that still need sprinklers. And of the $152 million of the deferred maintenance backlog. About 69 million of that is for sprinklers and associated plumbing equipment that is needed in those 26 buildings. Statewide, we have about a $354 million backlog for public housing across the state, and a portion of that, I don't have the exact amount, a portion of that is also for sprinklers and other fire maintenance and life safety critical infrastructure. So do you think this could make it into the bonding bill? So the governor has proposed about $60 million for public housing to get bonds. In the past, we've done 10 to $20 million, and so $60 million would be a good infusion, and I think this would be a good use for that money. Now, metro areas, and actually rural areas, all across the state, there is a housing shortage. And I'm mm -hmm. wondering if the money that's needed to upgrade these facilities to make them safer for all, those dollars are in competition with the dollars that are needed simply to build more affordable housing across the state. Um, I, I think you could look at it that way because I think they are in competition, but I think what is that balance? We need housing and we need to have safe housing, and so they shouldn't be in competition because I think the bill has it spread out over 12 years, and so I think if you could retrofit these buildings over 12 years, that spreads that money out, and so we, and then it makes it safe, affordable housing over those 12 years, and then we do need more housing, and so I don't think we can really do either or. I think we need to do both. Is there any fear that rents could rise? Uh, in public housing, the rent wouldn't rise, and I think if you look at it, again, spread out over 12 years, I think in other, where the nonprofits are, where they have low-income housing, that clearly is something that we'll have to discuss. How do they finance to get that um, sprinkler system put in? And because I think, again, it's a balance, but it's, it's a safety issue, so we need to really look at it and have that conversation. How much time would landlords or property owners have to implement these upgrades? So the bill allows for 12 years. And then there is, a, there is a clause for an extension, and so they can write an extension. It asks them to provide a plan so that in their own mind and in their own budget, they're figuring out how do we do this and what's the time frame and that so we can be prepared to get it done in 12 <coughs> years. And then there is an extension because, you know, 
uh, you can plan for certain things and then other things happen and so that's been part of the issue in Minneapolis public housing where they might have had planned to do some affordable sprinkler system upgrades but then you run into that the heating system went out so it is that balance and so we understand that that happens and so we put in for extensions as well so how much time would landlords or property owners have to implement this new policy if it becomes law so the bill has a 12-year time frame so they need to submit a plan for what their timeline will be and then they can in their own minds and in their own budgets try to figure out how they're going to pay for it and what the timeline should be and then it also has a clause allowing for extension so they can apply for an extension because things do come up and emergencies come up where you have to ship funding and so we don't want to um, penalize people that are trying to do the right thing so do you want there to be kind of a hard deadline though by like you know 2035 all places in Minnesota will have you know fire sprinkler systems in place I think the goal is 2032 okay and then extensions on a case-by-case -case needed uh, the bill has been dropped in the house um, I haven't seen it in the Senate yet I assume you're working on it uh, when do you expect to, to get it out there, and do you think it'll have bipartisan support? Yep, I was getting signatures today, and we do have bipartisan support, and I'll be dropping it this week. And first committee hearing, which committee, when do you have an idea on that? I don't know. It should be judiciary, but I don't have a date. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, Senator Kerry Dietzik, thank you so much for your time today. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me.